Hello, in today's video we will be discussing an overview of the musculoskeletal complications in diabetes patients. So muscle and skeletal problems in diabetes. Have you ever, for example, wondered how common is uh, these muscle problems or bone problems in diabetes? Have you ever wondered, is there any connection at all? And there is. There, there, there's a range from very rare to very common. So for example, hand abnormalities like carpal tunnel syndrome or Dubuitrin's contraction, these are common ones. Then we have other ones, these include shoulder pain, we have osteoarthritis, we have limited joint mobility and other bone diseases, for example. These can be rare. So a well-known fact is that diabetes can lead to health complications later in life if it is not adequately managed, okay? And although not everyone with diabetes will develop these complications, we will discuss today, it is still very important and beneficial to have an overview at least of which muscle problems or which skeletal problems occur in diabetes mellitus. So let's get started. We have uh, the complications or unwanted outcomes that we can call it from an illness is the complications. And these are uh, these various complications that occur, uh, usually occur when we have very high blood glucose levels and if it's left untreated. And why is this a concern? Diabetes can cause changes in your musculoskeletal system, including your muscles, your bones, your joints, your ligaments, your tendons. And in, in essence, these complications lead to changes that can cause numerous other conditions that may affect your fingers, your hands, your wrists, your shoulders, your neck, your spine, your feet. So you see everything. So all the skeletal problems. And it can be muscle pain, joint pain, stiffness, lessened ability to move your joint, joint swelling, deformities, uh, pins and needle sensation in the arms or legs. This can be, of course, different from person to person. So the doctor, doctors need to actively ask for them as patients may not give this information otherwise because back pain is very common and you don't see the connection uh, very often. So as patient, you don't know that this is because of diabetes. So musculoskeletal complications are most commonly seen in patients with a very long standing history of type 1 diabetes. But they are also seen in patients with type 2 diabetes. So we will discuss them, the complications here that affect the hands first. So because, because these are the more, more common ones. So the first one of these common hand complications is carpal tunnel syndrome. So carpal tunnel syndrome is a pressure on a nerve in your wrist that causes tingling, numbness, prickling or burning sensation. And this causes, and this is painful, can be painful in your hand, painful in your fingers, even your arms. And the pain may even wake patients from sleep at night and activities such as holding a newspaper or holding a book or typing or driving or using a knife, fork, and it can all make it feel worse. And it is seen up to 20% of diabetic patients. 20%. So there's a higher chance of getting carpal tunnel syndrome if the patient has limited joint mobility or a long duration of diabetes. And carpal tunnel syndrome is usually diagnosed based on the patient's history, the symptoms, the clinical findings, and the treatment of this includes using a volar wrist splint, particularly at night, so with or without in, so non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So we can use medications also if needed. If not, then we don't need to use it. Otherwise, we can have corticosteroid injections and surgery if, if, if it's not possible otherwise. So the second frequent complication of the hands is Dupuytren's contractions. And it affects approximately 15 to 40%. So this is very, very common again. And uh, it is very common in those who have had diabetes for a very long time or advanced in advanced age. And Dubuitrin's contraction results now from thickening, we have a shortening and we have fibros fibrosis of the thin sheet that is enclosing the muscles in your palms. And in short, we can say the physical therapy is often beneficial for early or mild cases while surgery is needed in more severe cases. So let's look at the Third one. Third one we have flexor tenosynovitis, which is more commonly known as trigger finger. Trigger finger. And patients with this trigger finger complain of a catching sensation or locking phenomenon associated with pain 
in the affected finger and it this trigger finger affects approximately 5 to 20 percent so also common but not so common as the other ones and it may involve multiple fingers so not just one and, it, and the initial treatment is injecting local corticosteroids into the tendon sheet of the finger and if this is unsuccessful patients will most likely need to see a hand surgeon again for a minor minor operation that can provide them permanent relief so it's very good another diabetic complication of the hand is diabetic sclerodactyly and it is characterized by thickening and waxiness of the skin so in addition the skin at the back of the fingers is often affected we have sclerodactyly being part of limited joint mobility syndrome or diabetic arthropathy, which is characterized by hand stiffness resulting from flexion contractions of the fingers with thickened, tight, waxy skin and it is also called diabetic stiff hand syndrome. So limited joint mobility is common in diabetes mellitus and occurs in type 1 and in also in type 2 diabetes. And one indication of the presence of this condition is known as the prayer sign. And the symptom shows the patient's inability to press their palms together completely without having a gap between opposed uh, palms and fingers here. And the specific treatment of this diabetic stiff hand syndrome is actually unknown. So the specific treatment. But we need to optimize the glycemic control and we need to uh, uh, help the hand movement by physiotherapy. Diabetes can also affect the shoulders. We have, can have pain. There are two main types of shoulder problems. First is adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder in 19 to 29% of people with diabetes. And this frozen shoulder refers to a stiffened shoulder joint usually caused by a reversible contraction of the joint capsule and the patient complain about shoulder stiffness uh, there's decreased range of motion and uh, the treatment is actually conservative conservative means we need to minimize the immobilization uh, we need to exercise we need uh, medications for pain intraarticular injections and so on and uh, it is also we have also something called rotator cuff tendinopathy and this is a symptomatic uh, rot rotator cuff tendon disorder and this typically results in pain with for example overhead activities and patients often describe pain at night and especially when lying in uh, on the affected shoulder for example and then ultrasound is often used for the diagnosis and treatment uh, is cryotherapy rest and a short course of non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs these are the treatment options, unfortunately. Two rare disorders can be caused by diabetes complications. Firstly, first of all, we have diabetes mellitus is being the disease which is the most common associated with neuro, neuro, uh, neuropathic or Charcot arthropathy, although the disorders likely affect less than 1% of diabetic patients annually. So in patients with diabetes, we have a loss of sensation to a joint combined with mechanical and vascular factors and this may all result in this chronic progressive and destructive joint disease or orthopathy okay the diabetic neuropathic joint the disease most commonly affects the joints of the foot or the ankle and it typically affects patients with a long-standing diabetes as we saw with every other one uh, long-standing peripheral neuropathy and affecting type 1 and type 2 patients both the diagnosis is made by Chest, uh, so by x-ray and the treatment is conservative once again, splinting to protect the area from weight bearing and then glycemic control. So glycemic control is most important. Broad spectrum empiric antibiotics uh, when, for example, we have skin ulcers accompanying this arthropathy and so on. So diabetic muscle infarction is very rare. So with no history of trauma, this spontaneous infarction tends to affect patients with a long history, again, of diabetes. So this is the main message here. Long, long-standing diabetes causes all of these problems. So we have uh, tenderness here, uh, which worsened over days or weeks, and it is usually diagnosed by the elimination of other possible causes. So therapy consists of rest, painkillers, as we have seen, some of the complications have a known direct association here with diabetes. However, then others have 
possible relationships with diabetes, so only possible. And we will discuss now two of these. First, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, or DISH. So acronym DISH is a non-inflammatory disorder. It is diagnosed with lateral spine uh, X-ray, which showed a calcification of the spinal ligaments. And we have the thoracic, uh, thoracic spine being the most commonly affected. And this DISH then has a prevalence among uh, diabetes patients uh, uh, more, more prevalent than in non-diabetic patients. And specifically, it is frequently seen in associate, association with type 2, and uh, particularly in obese patients. And patients complain now of stiffness in the neck and back, with decreased, decreased range of motion, and the treatment is physical therapy, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, and, and conservative uh, physiotherapy. And the complication or disease, uh, the relationship with diabetes uh, can also be seen with a disease called osteoarthritis. And the condition is very complex. So type 2 diabetes is associated with an increased risk of osteoarthritis. And in addition, diabetes may adversely affect the cartilages, increasing the vulnerability to the development of the osteoarthritis. So to Recap now, some musculoskeletal complications of diabetes are common and can lead to significant pain, significant disability, and they usually occur in patients with poorly controlled diabetes of very long durations, as we saw, and in those who have uh, other more severe complications. And the hand abnormalities are the most common, and these were carpal tunnel syndrome, Dupuytren's contraction, trigger finger, and limited joint mobility. And some complications then cause shoulder pain, some cause frozen shoulder, rotator cuff tendinopathy, shortcut arthropathy. Uh, we have diabetic muscle infarction being very rare, uh, but we just mentioned it here. Uh, and then uh, we have diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. We have osteoarthritis and these being having possible links. So possible link and co possible complication of diabetes. Uh, so if you want to think of diabetes as a disease, uh, you're actually very wrong. So di diabetes itself is actually a disease, yes, but it is causing very many other diseases. And that's the problem with diabetes, that uh, it is actually the mother of all diseases, one can say. And therefore, I make so many lectures here about, uh, about diabetes, while I think that when you have joint pain, when you have shoulder pain and so on, you should not only think of regular shoulder pain as, as, as something local here. You should go and check your blood glucose levels because it can be a sign, as we saw, of diabetes. And as you see, this correlation sometimes is very hard to make because that's not the first thing a patient would think about when he thinks of, think, think about a diabetes, that I will have shoulder pain or I will have carpal tunnel syndrome. So what I want you to say is diabetes is like a, a disease that is making all of these complications possible. So whenever you get diabetes, you have the risk of getting almost all diseases that I can think about. Because now we are only de dealing with musculoskeletal part. But as we saw in my other videos, we have the nerves being affected. And as we know, the nerves are, at are attached to all the organs. So if you go on, you, you, you have then also the vascular system being affected. Not just the small vessels, but the big arteries. So which organ cannot be affected by diabetes? That's my question to you. Maybe you can check it out. If you find that organ, please let me know. And that's my main message here. That diabetes can cause musculoskeletal problems. What you would never think about. You would think, okay, vascular problems, logical. Nerve problems, yeah, can be logical. But musculoskeletal system problems? How in earth? Can this happen? That you get a carpal tunnel syndrome, you get Dubuitrin's contraction, you get shoulder pain, and as we saw, you can get knee pain, you can get feet pain, you can get all kinds of pain. All due to diabetes. So please, take diabetes very seriously, take your diet very seriously. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.